All right, enough of this nonsense, Jules. How about your favorite part of the show? Yes, that's let's right. Go. It's what we call quick hits. Now, we hate to pick on Barcelona here, but another six directors resigned in protest against Bartomeu. <laughs> and this weird story about I3 Ventures won't go away. Remind us again, who are they and what were they doing? Well, from what it seems like, and again, the club and, and I3 Ventures are denying it, but it looks like... They're investigating it, though. The investigating. club are investigating it, it seems while also denying it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. But it seems that Barcelona uh, paid I3 Ventures to create social media accounts pretty much everywhere on every platform um, to say bad things about some of the players, some of the staff, some of the people at the club, but not Bartomeu. And actually, the other hand for Bartomeu and just... Uh, saying how amazing Bartomeu was. That's not the only problem as well, because that, that's already in itself is pretty bad. But also that for what looks like a service that you usually get billed for 100,000, maybe 200,000 euros, they actually pay 900,000 euros. So they even overpaid for that kind of stuff that was not very legal and, in the first place anyway. So someone there's said, another element to this, which is all their invoices, like there's a certain threshold uh, above which the invoices get audited internally. Yeah. And then there's a, you know, below that it's considered like petty cash. They always invoiced just beneath that threshold so that yeah. people couldn't go and, and people wouldn't notice that I3 Avengers exists. Um, it's dodgy. But such a big club, self destructing like this, in, you know, in, I mean, in a time as well when there's no game. So everybody can just look, you know, if, if there was a lot of games happening and Barca were winning and Messi was amazing, they could just hide that kind of things or it would go maybe a bit, a bit less noticed and more unnoticed. But right now, that's all we can talk about. So everybody's so focused on them. It's, it's a disaster. Well, and Nick goes further, of course, because you also have the, you know, the Messi situation, which was covered with his statement. And also, this is really serious and has legal implications. But one of the, the, the vice, uh, one of the directors who, who resigned, giving an interview at the weekend, and he's saying like, "Oh, somebody at Barcelona has their hand in the till." In the till I don't yeah. know who it is. Now, Barcelona, of course, naturally have designed this. They're, they're they're exploring legal options, but you know, to have a guy who's so close to the president come out and make these sort of accusations. Um, did you feel a little bit sorry for Bartomeu? Yeah, yeah, I do. I think it's ugly, and for such a great club, it's just it's, it reflects so badly. It's just, and it was probably so much avoidable. I, I know there's the elections come in, whether they're this summer, the following summer, whenever, and and it's it's like an electoral campaign. It's always a bit feisty, but that's bad. That's so bad on every level. All right, Jules, we worked it out. Jane Sancho is definitely joining Manchester United, right? Of course he is, and you know why. You know how we found out. We, it was all revealed last night in a live Instagram chat when someone, uh, you, know, you know how that works. You're, you're talking and people send their messages or their questions and you can see them on your screen and you can answer or not. And you can do whatever you want. And someone says, sip, sip some water if you're joining United. And what did Jadon Sancho do? He obviously took a bottle when he saw the message and drank a bit of it. And then since then, everybody has to a conclusion that he was going. Obviously, you know, we, this is a joke. You know, he might, he might be joining United and, and United will certainly do a lot of work. I don't think he's done already, obviously, but, but I think it's, 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 a, it's a very big possibility that he will end up at Old Trafford in the summer whenever the, the transfer window opens. And Gab, we've got another story on, on Harry Kane and the link with Manchester United on the, on the website written by Rob Dawson, who's usually very well informed. Do you think it's a really realistic possibility that United will sign Harry Kane in the summer? Well, in the summer while the Premier League is still going well, on? Well, you know, <laughs> when the transfer window opens at some point. I mean, there were all the others. There were these stories, of course, this weekend, right? Putting a, a price on it. Uh, was it two hundred million or something yeah, stupid like that? Or something, yeah. But it's all, it's all paper talk. Obviously, Kane kind of opened the door a little bit when he answered that question uh, honestly a couple of weeks ago. I just don't know if you're Manchester United. Harry Kane is going to turn twenty-seven. Um, I think he's somebody you sign as a finishing touch to a team to bring to put you over the top would simply adding Harry Kane to this group turn United into a title contender I don't know 
I and, and, and for that kind of money, I, I will tell you, United, because of the money they have and because I think they're going to suffer less than a lot of other clubs, uh, although everybody's suffering, they're in a position where they could go and cherry pick, you know, the top 22, 23, 24-year-olds uh, in the world. So I like Harry Kane for United, but I like him at a certain number. And it's not the 200 million that Levy or Lewis might be talking about. It simply isn't. Plus, he's coming off an injury. He says he's fit again, but we don't know what, what condition he's in, right? Yeah. No, that's right. It's, I think it's a very good debate, and we will have that debate many times between now and, and whenever the transfer window opens. Will he go? Will he not go? I, I think it would be a, a great shot for United, whatever price they can get him. But they might have to choose. We might not be able to sign in the same transfer window. Jadon Sancho, another centre-back, Harry Kane. I mean, there's, there's a point where you can't just spend 500 million pounds in the summer. So they would have to make choices. Ooh, Dele Alli celebrated his birthday over the weekend. Jules, I bet it was a raucous affair. In fact, I think they're going to make the hangover four will be based yeah. on Dele Alli's birthday weekend. Crazy, crazy party. Crazy, like wild scenes, really, at Dele Alli's mansion. Uh, not far from where I live, actually, just up the road. Uh, no, no, he was obviously in self-isolation, like all of us. His uh, cake was a PlayStation uh, control as a cake with the, with the, uh, the candles. There was, a few, there, there was a few people with him, so I'm sure they're the people he self-isolate with and has done since Who the are start they? of... Is it his entourage? I don't know, you could, you, could only see, you could only see legs on the photo. You see legs and socks, and that's all. So I, I just assumed that they were not guests who came over for the day. Could you tell from the legs and the socks if they were men or women? I th- it looked like there was two pairs of skinny ones, so you would assume maybe women. And then, and then another... Another pair of legs that look like more like a guy. So, you know, probably, I don't know, his girlfriends and friends who have been with him since the start of, you know, the lockdown and, and self-isolation. But yeah, 24, turning 24, uh, Dele Alli. And, you know, he played Twister. Happy he played Pin the Tail on the Donkey, right? Yeah, yeah, on his own, yeah. Maybe he had like a, what do you call it, a piñata, you know, the thing that you, you just smash and then all the sweets fall down. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure you had one of those. So happy birthday, Dele. And sorry we couldn't make it to your party. But if you rearrange your party after all of this is over, Gab and I would be there, of course. Don't, don't worry. Actually, I'm going to ask you. If he had invited you, if he'd rung you up and he said, Jules, you live around the corner. Will you come and self-isolate with me and get your family and stuff? And you can still do the Gab and Jules podcast from, from my place. But I just, you know, I need somebody to hang out with. I need, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I need the self-distancing. I can't. The social distancing is very important to me. I can't, I, my mind can't function if, if I feel in danger or something like that. So no, but if you were self isolated for a whole month with Dele Alli. Oh, so at the start, you mean not now? Yes. At the start. Oh, at the start. Okay, would you have felt like a third wheel? Oh, uh, can I bring the whole Lawrence's family with me? Or is it just me? Because I mean, he wouldn't want all of us at his house because that would be carnage the three kids and the wife and all of that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we would have played a lot of FIFA, you know, played in the garden, I guess, and stuff, or, you know. All right. I'd like to imagine that, you know, given I think there's some Arsenal fans in your family, you might have, uh, <laughs> you might have become a bit mischievous there. Well, there's probably other people, though, I would choose ahead of Dele Alli to spend my self-isolation with. No, Paul Pogba, we haven't forgotten about you. Um, hey, I have an idea. Shall we ask you about whether his heart's in it at Manchester United and he's angling for a move? <laughs> or is that a tired, <laughs> stupid question that I would never ask on this podcast unless the facts change? So just have, how's he doing? Is he still yeah. injured? No, he's not. He's, he's back and he's coming back and he's, he's been uh, challenging Zlatan, by the way, doing some tricks and stuff in their house, in their own house. But he, he, he gave a little interview to the, uh, the Manchester United official podcast uh, which they released at the weekend and basically explaining the injuries and why he has been a, a blank season pretty much for him. Right now he's played only eight games and saying that he, um, he needed surgery on his ankle at the start of the season. And then when he came back, the, the bone in his ankle had actually grown and got bigger, uh, which caused him a lot of pain. So he needed another surgery after he played on, he played on Boxing Day. And that's why we haven't been seen since. And he says that now he's, he's feeling much better. There's no pain anymore. And as soon as Training resumes. He'll be able to be back with the with the squad, and and I think as soon as the, the league resumes as well, he'll, he'll be he'll be playing. Now, but he's been a long, you know, whether you like him or not, it, it can't have been easy for him. 
no, no, really. I know you look at me with like, like it's true. <laughs> like it, can't, it can't have been easy for him. I mean, all that time, people said, oh, but he doesn't want to be there. He doesn't want to play for you. That's not the point. The point is, he wants to play football, whoever that is for, and he could not have played football this season. And it, that must be really hard to go through. Now, Jules, I'm, you're, not many people know this, but of course, you're a qualified orthopedic surgeon. Um, yeah, of course I am. Is it normal that you have surgery and then the bone starts growing while you're having surgery and then you have to have it again because the bone's too big to... Well, I think it's, it's a... I just love your side description. Effect. <laughs> no, I think it's a side effect from the first surgery that created that and maybe the way that operation was made or something, I would think. Uh, but the fact is, after that first surgery on an ankle and, and you know, people like... Marco van Basten had a lot of surgery on his ankle no, that cost him his career, you know, and I'm not, the ankle I, is a I mean, very sensitive area. You just hope area. he comes back healthy. Yeah. Uh, I have a good friend who's, uh, who actually is an orthopedic surgeon, uh, and he made the point uh, that if you had VAR for surgery, like, it would absolutely suck, and they would have to take out so much insurance, and it would be the <laughs> worst sure, thing I'm in sure. the world. No, just I'm because sure. so much that's involved is people making educated guesses, and you get so many unexpected things. It's not a question of you know how talented a surgeon you are yeah, knowledge, or yeah. an orthopod. It's it's just that there's so many variables. Uh, speaking of lockdown, one of the tough things about lockdown is the lack of opportunity to exercise and the temptation to go and visit the refrigerator in town. <laughs> Um, Jules, there's one Real Madrid star has discussed his struggles quite openly. Yeah, I mean, listen, Eden Hazard, I know you're listening to the pod. We love you, Gab and I, on the pod. Dream straight. And we've all, we, we all, we, we're all in the same situation. It's, it's hard for everyone not to eat when you're, you know, in the house all, all day long and there's chocolate and there's biscuits and there's this barbecue we could do all those kind of things I, I love i love how like because eden hazard is little you assume that when he chows he eats the kind of things that a child would eat like chocolate well, no, what, what would make him what would make him as fat as he was when he came back from uh you know from 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 pre from from holidays i don't know the dude Madrid, belgium like chips. could be the dude Belgian, yeah, yes, chips, he could Belgian be eating chips. like mountains of mules and frites, or what do you call frites, yeah, with, yeah, yeah. With, with the mayo, and they, he could be he could be eating all the, those foie gras terrines that you get at your Belgian tractor. True. Why it gotta be Kinder eggs and like ice cream? No, no, no but I'm just. Why are you making him say like this could be part of it? It could be part of it. Next time I'll ask him why he finds the hardest to resist to, and then I'll tell you. Uh, but this is a message for you, Eden, brother. We we all we've all been there. We are all there right now with you. Keep the faith. Try to still do a bit of exercise outside because otherwise you're going to come back like, you know, I don't know, like a, like a dependent. Uh, and, like and a dependent, is that. that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> like the Michelin man, yes? Yeah, like the Michelin <laughs> man. So please, Eden, be careful, be careful. And I know it's hard. So he said on an interview to uh, Belgian television that he found it really difficult not to eat too much. And we know because we've seen you in, after the summer, Eden, that you, know, you love your food like all of us. So just keep the faith. And, and hopefully everything will be fine. Don't worry. Eden, don't listen to these people. You come back. You know, you're as big as a house. You'll still be the <laughs> second most talented person at the club after your manager. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.